hallelujah bless the name of the Lord but yet this is another day that we've gathered together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning on this second Sunday in the new year 2023 we bless God for those of you who are in the house as you sit yourselves here in the presence of God and those of you who are watching via social media we thank you for joining us this morning let's give God a hand of praise amen for this we've made it thus far the songwriter says I've come this far by faith leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning hallelujah our scripture reading will take place coming from Romans the 12th chapter this morning Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his, his good pleasing and perfect will again we want to welcome you to the new life christian fellowship church here under the direction of our bishop bishop robert register and lady register on this morning we're located at 1321 providence road in the metropolis city of brandon florida again we're so delighted that you've taken the time to join us our brothers and sisters we thank god for our sister sister cynthia who has joined us this morning so glad to have you with us on this morning god is a healer and a deliverer somebody say he's an all time god yes he is yes he is let's look to the lord in prayer as we invoke on this wonderful day of worship god we thank you this morning now here we are we thank you for allowing us to get up early this morning god to prepare ourselves dress on ourselves to make it to the house hold of faith we thank you god how you protected us on last night and now we've made it this far god to worship you together in the presence of our brothers and sisters together god we come to magnify your name god magnify means to expand god you are a big god and on this morning god we lift our holy hands we lift up holy hands in reverence to you signifying god that we surrender ourselves unto you this morning god some of us come may have came brokenhearted some of us might have came with lacking whether it's in our finances whether it's in our relationship but on today oh god we invoke your presence we ask for your presence this morning oh god as the psalmists open up their mouth to sing songs for you god we adore you we worship you and we magnify your holy name come in the room meet us where we're at right now god some of us may not be at the place where we need to be but god make this the day of salvation oh god stir up god restore renew rejuvenate oh god and god we ask god those who are afflicted god in their bodies god we ask for healing total healing and deliverance in the mighty name of jesus oh god we call upon you god because you're real we know god that you are a healer and you are a deliverer so we invoke your presence we invoke the holy ghost the anointing this morning god help us to sing help us to preach help us to teach and father god those who may not know you as personal savior whether they're in the building or whether they're watching via social media we pray in the mighty name of jesus that the anointing and the power of the holy ghost rest right now god arrest them in the name of jesus so that they can cry out before you god and they can tell somebody about your love tell somebody about you god show up like never yet before as the man servant brings forth the word of god open up our spiritual ears god oh god that the word of god may, may change our hearts god that you would speak through the man of god that they may not see the man of god but they would see the god in the man in the name of jesus and so god everything we do here today let it not be in vain 
let it not be for our own self God but God let us do it in reverence to you God let everything be done today in decency and in order let the result of you God being pleased with our service on today so have your way mighty God have your way mighty God oh God stir up in us stir up the joy of our salvation we bless your name and we thank you for what you have done already come on somebody give God a hand clap of praise come on if you're at home give God a hand clap of praise let's worship him in spirit and in truth and in the very beauty of holiness hallelujah hallelujah God you're worthy 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I stated earlier, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. God is an awesome God. And he deserves our praise on this morning. Now, if you would indulge me this morning... I don't want to bore you. I don't want to force anybody to worship. You got to worship God for yourself. But here's what I'm asking for you to do on this morning. I'm asking you to not wait on the praise team to get you pumped and primed up this morning. You should have a praise on in the inside. You should have a praise on your lips this morning. Listen, and I'm not even only talking to the people that are listening to us. I'm talking to the praise team as well. See, because there's worship is more than just having a gift worship is more than just sounding good worship is more than just singing but worship is is a self is a self look back at what you think about what god is doing what he has done in your life this morning so i want you amen to not to wait on the praise team this morning but i want you to open up your mouth come on come on that's it open up your mouth this morning if you got something to thank God for, come on and open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to thank him. Come on and begin to praise him for what he has done. Begin to praise him for what he is getting ready to do even right now. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I can't hear nobody. Come on, I can't hear you. I can't hear you this morning. That's it. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Oh God, we worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your way this morning, oh God. God, we seek your presence in this house this morning. We seek your anointing this morning. Oh, have your way, have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Oh, come on, come on, open up your mouth. That's right. Oh yes, I ain't begging you. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, I'm not begging you. But I'm asking you, come on, if God has done something good for you, you ought to do something about that. Act like he was at home. Act like he was in your own living room, in your bathroom. Praising God for yourself for what he's done. For what he's getting ready to do. Oh, he brought you out. He turned things around. He made your, your, your midnight in today. Come on and give God praise. He the worthy. Somebody say worthy. Oh, come on, say worthy. Come on, praise team. Use your microphones. Come on, use your microphones and say he's worthy. He's worthy. That's it. That's it. Oh, come on. That's it. That's it. We come to worship him. That's it. That's it, Carla. That's it. That's what we came to do. Don't wait for us to praise him. Come on. You better praise him while you got a chance. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give God praise in the house. He the worthy. Boy, you better make a joyful noise. Get mad at me if you want to. But that's what I came to do. I came to praise him. You can get mad at me if you want to. But I came to make a joyful noise. 
Jesus. He's worthy. Worthy to be praised. One, two. He wanted one. He wanted to be praised. Oh yeah, that's what we come to do. You can look at me like I'm crazy, but it's all right. You got to praise him until something happens. You got to praise him until something happens. One, two. You got to praise him until something happens. One, two. You got to praise him until something happens this morning. One. Come on, give God praise. I see you, son, Joe. That's right. Come on. Oh, come on. Anything that's dead belongs in the grave. My Savior is alive and well. I know I'm loud, but it's all right. I came to praise the one, too. Come on, somebody. Come on and praise the Lord in the house. One, two. Come on and praise ye the Lord. Woo! <laughs> one. Hallelujah. You can get tired if you want to. But I came to praise him. I came to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. One, two. Oh, open up your mouth and praise him. One, two. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! One, two. Ah, hear us this morning, oh God. Hear us this morning, oh God. Oh God, do something different, God. Do something new in this house this morning. One, two. Do something new this morning, oh God. God, we're tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again and getting the same result. One, two. So God, we're asking for something different this morning. Stir it up in us, one. Stir it up in us, oh God. I am my mama, my Sunday. Look at the baby. She even praises him. Look at the babies. The babies praise them. If the babies can praise him, you can do it too. Hey, I'm my mama, my Sunday. What two? Ah, oh, we praise him. Here we are, God. What two? Oh God, hear us this morning. Oh God, what two? We praise you, oh God. One, two. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you. Sister Michelle, I'm tired of doing the same thing over and over again. I'm tired of doing the same thing and getting the same results. I came to praise the Lord. One, two. If you didn't come to praise the Lord, that's your problem. Look at me like you're crazy. I don't care. God's been too good for me to sit down and do the same thing over and over again. One. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you've been good to me. You've been good to me, oh God. I should have been dead. But God, you spared my life. One, two. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One, two. Hallelujah. One, two. Yeah. Oh. He's awesome. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Good, 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 good. Oh, oh he's a good God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't get tired of praising him. You can't get tired of praising him. He's been just that good to us. Hey. Hallelujah. Anybody trust him this morning? Does anybody in the house trust the I Lord trust this him. morning? I trust, I trust him with everything that I've got in me this morning. He's been just that good to me. Always and forever. Oh, you've been good, God. He listen to the song. Come on, we're in worship. We're in the mode of worship. That's right. Come on, come on. We worship. Don't stop praising him. Come on and worship him. He's worthy of our praise. That's it, Carla. That's it, Carla. Hallelujah. Hey! Hear 
us this morning, oh God. Hear us this morning, oh God. Thank you, Marcus. You're doing good, brother. Thank you. Hallelujah. Here we are this morning, oh God. Hear us this morning. Listen, listen, listen to the song. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you always. Father, I need you. Can't do life without you. Father, I trust you always. Is that your testimony this morning? If that's your testimony, come on and help us worship God in this house. Oh God, we trust you this morning. We believe in you. We know you can do it. Come on, say, Father. Father, I trust you. You got it. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Y'all got it. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Always and forever. Always. Father, I need you. Father, I need you. God, we can't do nothing without you. Can't do life without you. Father. Father, I need you. Always. Always. Come on, come on, come on. He's worthy to be praised. Come on. If you don't mind, lift those hands towards heaven and let's worship him together. Father, I trust you. Father, Father I trust you. Y'all got it. Come on. Father, I trust you. You got to share. That's it. Father, Father, I trust you. Always. Always. You got to. Father. Father, I trust you. Can't do life without you. Can't do life without you. Father. Father, I need you. That's right, baby. You praise him. Please heal me. Come on, say it. Father, please heal me. You got it. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. Always. Always. Father. Father, please heal me. And bring me the victory. And bring me the victory. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. Come on, look, look at the babies. They even praise Father, God. <laughs> That's the least you can do. Come on, Father. Father, please heal me. Always. Always. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. And bring me the victory. And bring me the victory. Sister Cynthia got victory this morning. Father, Father please heal me. Father, provide for me. Come on, say. Father, provide for me. That's it. That's it. Father, provide me. Father, provide for me. Father, provide for me. Always. Always. Father, provide for me. Father, provide for me. Supply every one of my needs. Supply every one of my needs. Y'all got it, Father. Father, provide for me. Always. Let me do it again. Father, provide for me. Come on, say, Father. Father, provide for me. That's it, that's it, Father. Father, provide for me. Y'all sound good, say. Father, provide for me. When, 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 when? Hey. Right now, right now, do it, God. Father. Father yes, sir. Right now, Bishop, for supply. Not yesterday, but right now. Right now, Bishop. Always. Can we say, Father, heal me? Please heal me. Father. Father, please heal me. Father. Father, please heal me. 
right now, oh God. Always. Always. We need your healing touch right now. And bring me the victory. Hey. That's right, sister. Raise those hands and give it to him. Why? Because we trust you. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Anybody trust him today? Come on. Father, For the 45 years I trust him all my life. Father, I trust you. Always and forever. Always. That's all I know. Father, I trust you. There's nothing without him this morning. Let's do it one more time. Somebody needs to hear that one more time. Say that. Be with me. Say. Be with me. You'll be with me always. You gotta call it. Be with me. Say. Be with me. You'll be with me always. Y'all gotta go. Be with me. Yes, you will.
Father, I trust you. Hande Yosa. Father, I trust you. Always. Hande Keria Bose. Father, I trust you. Can't do life without you. Father, I trust you. Always. Oh, come on, come on. God, we trust you. We trust you this morning. We depend on you. You are our help through the time, our hard times, short trials and tribulation. God, you've always been our provider. You are all that we need. We can't do life without you this morning. We trust you with our life. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. <laughs> When the doctors gave us a bad report, we still trust you. They said I couldn't get a car, but I trusted you. They said I couldn't get a house, but I trusted you. They said I couldn't get my credit report right, but I trusted you. You've been there for me when others forsaken me. I trust you. I'd be a fool not to trust in my brother. In the 40 plus years that I've been living for the knowledge of me knowing who Jesus was or is rather I've been trusting him from the time from the time I knew since that he was a real God and he has never ever ever failed me yet look things don't always work out like I want them to work out but listen when they work out it works out right on time <laughs> in due time and in due season he works it out you better he make those things happen for me because i trust in him i believe in him and i depend upon him i'd be crazy not to sister carla i'd be crazy not to put your confidence Put your confidence not in man. Put your confidence not in this world. But you better put your trust in God. Because we serve a real God. The God who is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. I serve a real God. Jehovah God. My provider. John, tell what you do to that boy last night or this morning. Bishop, listen, I woke up with a determination this no. morning, man, that I was going to praise. Listen, at le least I know you ain't too mad at it, not look, praising God like that. Look, I told them this morning, Doc, before you got here, I'm tired of coming in doing the same thing over and over and over again, Sister Scylla, and getting the same results. I know results. different. Come on, son. I need something Come different. Come on, son. Come on, and say it, man. I'm tired of doing it. Don't say it, man. Jehovah. It's a new year. This is a new year. I want something different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Denise. Bishop said this is a new year. And I'm expecting God to do some things. Amen. That, that we, we think that it's impossible. I'm expecting for him to fulfill those things. Yes. And on this year, amen, I promise him. Look at my baby. Look at these little girls. I was, I was watching them as they were praising God. Some of us, some of you at home. Amen. You sitting there. Some of you sitting here. Amen. Wondering why we act the way we do. Because when we think about the goodness. Jesus. Listen. Church has got to be changed. It's got to be different. The world has to have a reason to walk through these doors. The world has seen the church flip, flop, doing whatever we want to do amen and not wondering and, uh, 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 fig, trying to figure out well, why we do the things we do we come Sunday after Sunday and the same thing listen church has to be different we say that we serve a real God sister Amber and I'm expecting for God to do the impossible because 
Because he can do the impossible. Hallelujah. All right. I'm not the preacher. But Bishop, I woke up this morning. I prayed to God this morning. I told God. I said, God, I don't want to be the worship leader. That's mundane, meaning that it's the doing. You expect for me to say the same thing over and over. You expect for me to do the same cliches, and I'm tired of it. I want our worship experience to go to the next level. I told Bishop, I told the Bishop, 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 I told the praise team, listen, it ain't just about me. They got to open up their mouth and praise God. Listen, worship is more than just singing and sounding good. You can't stand up here thinking you're looking pretty and looking handsome, amen, and just thinking you're giving God some kind. God don't want your prettiness. What God wants from you is for you to open up your mouth Hallelujah. so that he knows that you're grateful for what he has done for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worship has got to be different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Quickly, quickly, we're going to move on. But let me say this. Worship. You find something. Worship so is listen, a you find. Thank you, Bishop. You find. Worship is a testimony of what God has done in your life. We don't worship no shrine or no, no uh, physical thing in here. We worship a God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The triune God. A spirit. And the Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't come up here and pretend that you've given God some praise that you ain't even believing in. Thank you, thank you. So listen, I don't just, I don't just admonish the saints, but I admonish the praise team, the worship leaders, the musicians, those of you who are held responsible to set the atmosphere, to set the tone. We got to stop doing things that we're like we're used to doing and let God have his way. Open up your mouth when you should. If you don't got nothing to talk about, then sit on down. God don't want your fake praise. He don't need your phony praise. Hallelujah. We're going to go on to the next song. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way, Holy Ghost. How your Sunday. Hallelujah. Yes, your worship should be a testimony. This is worship time, right? Yes, man. It is worship time. Yes, sir. You know what the Holy Ghost told me? Come on, Bish. Uh, he said, you know, I'm a cheerleader for God. I'm, I'm your cheerleader. You're my cheerleader. And, you know, I do listen to myself. Sometimes I be cheering when I should keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you know, sometimes I shout and, and the Holy Ghost said this morning, hey. just be quiet. Hey. Let him do the cheering. Hey. Let Jesus. him do that, that, that time he got, let him have Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. So just sit, sit there, just be quiet. Glory. Let you do your thing, man. Glory. Because it's, yeah. it's the worship experience. Hallelujah. You are the worship leader. Ooh. To give us a worship experience. Jesus. I don't need to be saying amen. Ha! Interrupt it. Just let you go ahead and flow, man. Jesus. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm saying it now, but it just consistent. I want you to flow, man. Bless you, man of God. I ain't trying to hold you back. Hold, Bless you, man of hold God. Hold that mule back. Man. Hallelujah. Plow that field, man. Bless the man of I God. I trust you. Listen, listen. I got to say it, Bishop, because it's just confirmation. I'm a, I'm a person, amen, I've been in church all of my life, and I know protocol. And one of the things that I've always said, that I would not, amen, interfere when the man of God has something to say, even, I'm, even though I'm the worship leader. But I prayed this, I prayed this morning, and I, I prayed this morning, and I asked God, I asked God to have his way this morning. Listen, listen what I said. I told God, I said, God, I don't want to be a nuisance to the bishop. Amen, because I know what God has called me to do. Amen. 
I respect and I honor the man of God and I never wanted there to be a conflict when I worship because this is the set man of God for this house and anytime the bishop amen interjects into the worship amen I have the liberty I let him have that liberty because this is the man of God for this house but this morning I told God I said God please allow me to be used this morning without the bishop getting in my way and bishop I don't mean no harm but look at what God did this morning he proved it to me he proved he proved to me this morning that was my prayer this morning bishop a little bit after six o'clock a little bit after six o'clock I said God have your way and let me be used but oh God let the bishop God find a way to allow me to be used this morning and that word you just shared was just confirmation because Bishop I know God has called me to do what I had to do and sometimes as a worship leader the pressure is always on you because you're trying to help set the atmosphere for the word of God to come forth with ease and sometimes it's always a challenge because I'm listening to the music, I'm listening to the praise team, I'm listening to the sound engineer trying to load. Everything is always, you're thinking about it. But this morning I give God the praise. Because he heard my prayer. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take too much more time. We're going to do another song, but I bless God for this move. I bless God for this opportunity. Bishop, for you allowing me to express this gift that God has blessed me with and I admonish you people of God it's not about us it ain't about these singers or these musicians we're only a tool to help set the atmosphere when you walk through those doors it is your duty to worship and praise God we're only here to help you to steer you to get to that point but your worship is your testimony of what God can do and what he is doing in your life. So I admonish you this morning that you worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We're going to do this song. Amen. Sister Titi, I know you're waiting on this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. God bless you, my brother. Come on, put your hands together with us. Hallelujah.
Yeah! 
nobody mad but the devil. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Now come on, give the devil a black eye right now. Come on, give the devil a black eye. <laughs> To the hands of the pulpit. I was a little confused on the last one. You said give the devil something. You said, give the devil a black eye. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was saying, if he said high five, I'm not doing no, that. No, we ain't doing that. <laughs> you don't get none of that That's from us. You, get, you know, you get a little older, sometimes your earring, your ears. And I, I think, read my medical charts, I have some hearing loss, part of my disability. Amen. And thank God I can still hear this morning. I can hear that Jesus still loves me. This I know. Of course, the Bible tells me so. Amen. But I'm serious. The Lord said this morning, he said, be a little bit more quieter. You know, everybody know you're the cheerleader in here, but be a little bit more cheerful inside. So I just, I turned my mic off. And the enemy tried to attack me, even coming through the door. He always tries to. It's always with people that you love and the people that love you. Always try to bring up things that, that, that they are something that they're not. And I just refuse to give the devil any room. Yes, sir. Now, you might want to, but I'm not going to. You, feel, you understand? See, I know how the devil operates. He operates in confusion and discord. He likes, he likes for you to tell somebody you love him in the one minute and then get mad at them the next minute. That's how he operates. You got to be able to see the devil coming and deal with him appropriately. For we are not ignorant of his devices. I, I want to make sure that the devil did not um, add any more discomfort to, to that situation I had to. I had to adjust myself, my feelings, my moment, because what's important to me is people, whether they're right or wrong. I said whether they're right or wrong. What's important to me here is people. Sometimes people are wrong, and their, their, their opinions or their point is wrong. But you've got to be able to know how to handle that, to not make them feel, you know, worse than they might. It takes real skill to deal with people. Listen to me. It takes real skill, Marty, to deal with people who have been damaged and wounded and hurt, rejected. You know, they come here and they're looking for some, some hope, some, some place where they won't be attacked anymore. Only to find out that this is not such a safe place <laughs> as it seems to be. You go home, some of the ushers stabbed me last week. Really? No, not literally, but I sure felt it. In fact, you know, I was stabbed once before with a knife. And, and uh, the pain went away in a week, but this stab lasted months. David said it wasn't an enemy that did it, but it was a friend. So we have to be very careful that the enemy doesn't distort, destroy, malign relationships that are critical to God's purpose. Not yours, but God's purpose. Heard some preacher saying that. Thank you, Shanine. She wrote I'd seen, uh, something on uh, Facebook. Not a Facebook fan as much as I need to be because we have a Facebook page. But a uh, pastor was talking about the difference between reconciliation and giving somebody the, the, the left hand or left foot of fellowship. You know, he's got, he said something to the effect, uh, Shandana, he said, you, you got to know who Judah is and you got to know who Peter is. They're both men in the Bible. They both were disciples, the original 12. One, or what, they both were sinners. They both did things that were egregious. Peter cursed God and said he didn't know him and Judas sold him out. There's no such thing as a hierarchy of sin. Sin is sin. They both, woman of God, they both had an opportunity to be reconciled. 
They both did. Judas chose not to be reconciled, and Peter did. So you've, you've got to listen, listen. And I'm using somebody else's thing here. God bless you. But it did interest me. And I think it, it, it bears appropriate uh, that I share this with you because I know where you, some of you might be. You better make sure that you know who the Judases in your life are and who the Peters are. You know what I'm saying? See, the Judases in, in your life, you got to say bye. So goodbye. So long, goodbye. <laughs> Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you, why? Because the Judas, the Judases in your life are not looking for reconciliation. They're, they're looking to create more havoc, more problems, more discord, more distrust. And you don't want to live with somebody the rest of your life like that. That any given moment, they have the, the ability to stab you straight in your back. Thank you all. Thank you all for the two clapping over there. <laughs> Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I'll take the two or three. Amen. Amen. This is not a game. This is real. It's so good to see Sam Sis in the back standing tall looking good. Ought to be in Hollywood, baby. She had it going on. That's, I was shocked. Look at that. It made me feel good. And and um, I, I ain't trying to throw no shade. But Tiana, Tiana, listen, your mother sure looked good today. You hear me? Touch your daughter. Tiara, your mother got, she giving you a run for your money today. <laughs> just being honest. Thanks, son. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thinking, I'm just saying. She giving you a run for your money. That, that should give you a pause to think. Hold up now. How old is my mother and how old am I? And what is she doing and what am I doing? Or, or maybe... Who does she got and what, I, what do I have? I'll just let that rest for a minute. Amen. Sometimes just a man will make the difference. Just a man, just a man in your life will make the difference. How many glad they're in the house of the Lord this morning? What a wonderful time to be here. I tell you, I'm in a season. I want you to know we're in a season of increase. At the same time of increase, there is a season of calamity. It's appropriate that you be real, to be honest with people that God can bless you while somebody is being destroyed at the same time. You got to be able to cry and shout joyful things at the same time. You got to be able to manage your highs and your lows. I wish I had a witness in here. For God is preparing us for great things. Somebody come give God some praise in this building. Oh, come on, you ain't did it like you really mean it. Sound like I said you're going to be defeated. I said God is preparing you for some great things. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, he's the only one that can do it. Hallelujah. Hey. I know it. Somebody said, I know it. I can feel it. I feel it all over me. I can feel it. I can feel prosperity all over me. Because, because see, the, the, the old me would have allowed something that took place a little while ago to really vex my spirit and for me to say the wrong things. For me to wait till after the it was over and then to, uh, to throw a haymaker. But this the new me. I don't need to knock nobody out. I don't need to throw no haymakers because you can't stop what God is going to do in my life. And I'm not going to let you be any more bitter than you might be because the blessing is still going to come. You see, you're going to have to get real smart. There's some haters that really hate you. I'm going to say it again. There's some really haters that really hate you. And they, listen, they don't want to see you no more blessed than what you got right now. What God is getting ready to do for you is much more than you can ever imagine. So you're going to have to keep your haters on the down low. You can't let them know everything that's getting ready. Am I talking to somebody in here? 
You can't always put on Facebook what God is getting ready to do for you. You can't always let somebody know what God, why? Because they're going to be more jealous than they ever been in their lives. They don't want God to do anything for you unless he absolutely do it for them first. They got to be first. Amen. I want to hear a song, I think, um, trying to. Father, our Father, our Father. Which shall we go? He left? Our Father. Is she still, is still here? It really blessed me this morning to hear him just, you know, he was loose. And he is a respectful young man. He said 40 some years old, it embarrassed me. Why are you laughing, mother? You older than me. <laughs> She's laughing all loud over there. She's older than me. But it embarrassed me because I said, man, he's 45. And I'm, I got almost 30 years on him, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it's been such a joy being your pastor. Bless you, man. It's such a joy being your wife's pastor. You all have been, you all have been a, a, a real joy to me. You know, not a headache, but a real joy. When I think of you all, I think of, I think of, I think of good things. I, I want to see you all do well. I want to see God open as many doors for me as he do for you. I want to see your kids grow. I want to see... I want to see the blessing of the Lord make you rich in that. No sorrow. I want to be right there, close back. I see it all take place. Yes, sir. That's what you mean to me, man. Don't ever forget that. As we bless your name. Yes. Come on, help us. Say, how will Father? How will Father? You are. You are whole. We give you. We give you glory. Your name, your name, our Father, you are, you are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name. We give you glory. Come on, help us sing right here. Somebody sing. Our Father, your name, our Father, you are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name, our Father, you are holy, we give you glory, that's it church, you got it, come on church, come on, speak of his name, our Father,
Oh yes. Oh yes. Your name. Your name. Your name. Your name. Your name is holy. Your name is holy. it about him and less about you. The atmosphere changes. Make it about him. Hey, 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 Cassandra, hey, 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 why you think I'm here? You, you can be praying. I came here to do this. I came here to do this. Now you might have came here with some hey! You can be praying. I came here to do this. You can look at me like a crazy person. I said it's still room. Still room to grow. Still room to develop. Still room to love those who hate me. Still, still room to, to love those who despitefully use me. Still, still good to love, to love those who loathe me and speak ill against me. Amen. Somebody said there's still room. Saying this a year of increase. It's kind of warm in here, or is that the Holy Ghost? What, what is it? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, they say men get hot flash. I don't know if it's a hot flash, cold flash, what flash we're dealing with, but a little flash going on up here. Amen. I'm flashing. At 67, I'm telling you, it's okay. Amen. Woo! So good to have uh, good, good to have people that love worship. Have a good worship department, good sex. Let's give a, a main man, Sherwood Davis, Marcus and Ryan, yes. and those that are lending their angelic voices That's to the right, kingdom Bishop. of God. Come That's on right, and bless Bishop. God for them. Amen. 
Let's give God to the staff, the ushers, those that were working in ministry, that have assisted people coming inside the building, have prepared the grounds, have taken out trash, have done things that before you got here. Come on, give a hand praise for the people that work behind the scenes. Amen. Because in order for an organization to be successful, it takes a lot of moving parts, working cohesively, not working against each other. Look at your neighbor if somebody's close enough to you and say, I got it. I got it. Woo! Say, I got it. I got it. Hey! Yes, sir. See, look how Tiki dressed. You know she got it. Look at the shoes. Look at Sister Arroyo over there with them shoes with the, with the tattoo on the foot. Somebody say, she got it, boy. Come on. Come on, show me. She got it. See, our hair's cut nice to the side. I got it. Look at Minister Michelle, got that red and them braids. Come on, somebody says she got it. Look at Mother sitting over there. Come on, got her hair way to the side. Somebody says she got it. It's not just good looks, but there's some oil on me. Somebody said that. I have the spirit of influence. I'm attractive. So many different ways. You have no idea how attractive you are this morning. That's why some sisters said, you know what? I don't know why this man is following around the store. I ain't got two cents in my pocket. It's not just your figure he's attracted to. There's some all on you. There's some all on you. Oil, 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 oil from heaven, oil from God, oil. God has graced you with gifts and talents and opportunities far beyond where you live, far beyond what you look like. Somebody say, I got it. It might not look like it, but it's here. Oh, come on. I need somebody to really... Say, I got it. Time to take a little while, Shantana, for it to come out. Look how sassy she is now. Mama walking in like she knows she got it. She didn't step like that earlier. She didn't have the, she didn't have the, the I got it confidence. When she coming in now, she got the I got it confidence. I wish I had somebody. You know, Cassandra, when you first start coming to the church, you. You're a bit apprehensive, a bit timid. Timidity, not because you were scared, but just a new place. But now God has unwrapped that package you in. Come on, everybody. Come on. He done unwrapped. He done unwrapped that package. And she gets on the prayer line. Sometimes she starts praying. Have all of us crying. All of us seasoned. We've been praying for years. She get on there and start praying. Have us. Come on. Somebody said she got it. And this year, this year you're going to prove that you got it. Because each one going to bring one. Each one going to get one. Each one going to find one. Now, if you ain't listening to me, because it's because it's you're being a little bit of, this will be, I said each one can get one. Each one can bring one. We should see this place quadruple in size why because you're here fine as you are and as anointed as you are as good and kind as you are look here if them folk from them from the border knew that you was here child they'd be lined up out there i just don't they wouldn't be at the they wouldn't be at the at the el paso border they'd be right here looking for you that's how much you got it Sometimes you think you don't have it because your credit score is a certain way. Listen, your credit score ain't got nothing to do with whether you got it or not. Go with me to the text, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 21. And then um, I want to draw your attention to one passage of scripture. Let me see one moment. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hold on. Wait a minute. Um, am I missing something here? Paul, did, did she say, I, she's, she's echoing. She, you know I know I got it. Come on. And you know I know. <laughs> you know I know it. I got it. I know I got it. Hey, say my boat shot up. I know I got it. I know I got it. I know I, I know I got it. I didn't know I had it at first though. Even when I got in the church, I didn't even know I had it. There were some people in the church trying to make me think I didn't have it. Isn't that something? People in the church try to make me think I didn't have it. Let me just get somewhere for a minute. Some of the real smart preachers, man, they don't even use Bibles no more, man. They just grab their phones out. They so smart and so deep, man. They just grab their phones. Like, man, where your Bible at? I don't need no Bible. It's all up in here. Cat's been preaching so long. Um, but the Bible records, before we get there, it records in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 60. In the Amplified Bible, it says like this. He said, arise. I'm sorry. Wait, give me one moment. One moment. One moment. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 in the Amplified Bible said, As the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me, commissioned me, to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives, and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance and the retribution of our God, and to comfort all who mourn, and to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following. He's going to give them a turban instead of dust on their heads, a sign of mourning and all of joy instead of mourning and a garment expressive of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I've been anointed. I want to read that one verse for you to let you know that, that when Jesus read that, even he read it in Luke, he was expressing the fact that he was anointed. He had it. He had what it took to fulfill God's purpose in his life. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth in this particular letter, starting in verse 17. He says these words, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things, somebody say all things, are become new. All things are of God who hath committed or who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us, my God, the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the word unto himself, not intruding their trespass unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who know no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So for the scripture, somebody say, I got it. Oh, come on, open it for your mouth. Say, I got it. Somebody say, I need it. You gotta have it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. For eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered in the hearts of things that you have prepared for them that love you. Most of us that are here that have lived on this planet for some time can express that same sentiment. There were times in our lives that we absolutely did not see this day we're living in today. So we thank you. We bless you. Now, God, minister effectively to your people. Strengthen them where they might be weak. Give me the tongue of the learned. 
bend my will to your way that at the end of this exercise these your people shall be edified and your name glorified this and all other merits i beg in the wonderful name of jesus the christ somebody say amen come on and clap your hands if you love him somebody say i got it okay there's seven there's actually eight things that you need to have if you're going to be really anointed and attract people to come into the house of god and follow you and do everything that you want to do in christ somebody say eight things Eight is the number of what? New beginnings. Let me just share this with you, that, that we know that, that there, there, there are attributes that all great people have. They just have them, man. They just, they, they're, they're extraordinary. They're, they're talents. They, they attract other people to them. It's the difference between personalities and those who have personality plus. And what quality will cause, because we need people to be drawn to us. How many know that? Listen, at the end of the day, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, the Bible says he's given you some talents. You, somebody five, somebody three, and somebody two. So at some point in your life, when it's done, God is going to ask you to give an account for what did you do in your body. Not just that you had a great time, you went to school, you had kids. and No, but did you, did you do anything in the question of leading people to me? So it's a reality that you just can't just be someone that, that goes through the motions. You must have a heart for people. Somebody says, i got to have a heart for people. And, and, and listen, you, you can't be so introverted that folk are not drawn to you. We need people who are charismatic. That's the word I'm looking for. Somebody say charismatic. The, the Greek word for anointed or anointing is the word charisma. It's where we get the word charis charisma from. Charisma. Sometimes you don't even know you got it. You're following people but don't know you got that oil in you. And charisma can be a difficult subject to grapple with most because most people think it's mystical or it's elusive. It's not elusive. Somebody say it's not elusive. Webster defines it. It gives several different definitions for charisma. It says, this is the one that we'll use. It says, it's a personal magic of leadership arousing special, popular, or loyal, or enthusiasm. It means you have the ability to cause people to be enthusiastic and loyal at the same time about something that you're sharing with them. Amen. And I could honestly say, it ain't, ain't got nothing to do with my looks. It ain't got nothing to do with, with, with uh, how, or, or how my oratorical skills are. There is an anointing on me that's been on me for some time. It's been on you that causes people to be attracted to you. Each one of us has these certain abilities that will increase as the charisma in our personalities. You don't have to strain or, or, or effort to, to become something that is not comfortable with your basic nature. However, if you desire to become a person that is people are drawn to, you've got to develop some skills. Somebody says, i got to develop some skills. I, 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 watch this. One of the things that it, when in the African-American community, and you don't have to be African-American, you could just be poor and, and not have good health care. It, there's been so many beautiful people that, that, that could not show their beauty because they, they didn't have a good dental plan. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, at the time, my grill ain't been right. So when, 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 when people have had issues with their dental, they couldn't always smile. They couldn't always talk. Why? Because the minute they open their mouth up, people see that their, their mouth is not where it should be. What would be somebody? And, 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 and it takes away from their character. So sometimes, watch this, if they don't get it fixed right away, they spend many years internalizing their value because they've not been able to share because why? Their mouth has stopped them from speaking. I wish I had a witness in here. Ain't nobody going to talk to me in here. I, I, I said there's a lot of things that have caused us and our abilities not to come forth. But thank God if we get some good people in our lives. We get some good education. We can get that all fixed. Miss us, I, I remember seeing a commercial on TV. A guy said, man, didn't have no girlfriends or nothing. And I went and got some teeth. And he said, wow, look at you. He said, my life changed. Changed because now he could express himself Talk to people. Come on, somebody. 
You know, my grandfather used to say something to me when I was growing up, Marty. He would say these things to me. He said, uh, in the morning, he said, he said, brush your teeth, comb your hair, and shine your shoes. Now, he ain't say nothing about washing your butt. <laughs> but what he, what, he, what he was saying was, there's some areas that people pay attention to. As a man, they are paying attention to your feet. So when you, when you meet people, you want to make sure that your feet look a certain way. Oh, God, help me. I, I wish I had a witness in here. I, I'm just telling you what a, what a man that had a sixth grade education. He, he didn't go to Harvard, didn't go to Yale. But he said to me, there's a couple of areas, son, you got to always. He said, make sure your shoes are shine. Not just you just got shoes on, but they're shine. And then he said something about your teeth. Why? Because your mouth, when people see you and you talk, that's the first thing they see. And he said, keep your hair combed. Because people have a tendency to see your, your mouth and see your hair and see your shoes and determine you ain't got much to offer them. Some of the great personalities, some great presidents, uh, in the world, they always talk about Ronald Reagan like he was supposed to be this mystical, magical guy. But he was a, he was an actor. I don't know why they say that Ronald Reagan. I mean, they talk, they try to deify him. He was he was a decent president. He wasn't no great president. When you, when you talk about great presidents in my hour, I think of people like Kennedy, and, and not because he was great morally, but at the time he was. He, he was he was pushed into an environment where where we were coming apart as a nation uh, as as a as race. I also looked at Johnson, who who really uh, was a Southerner, a Dixiecrat, but he was chosen for a particular hour. And a lot of the landmark legislation and civil rights, Johnson was a key man behind it. People talk about Lincoln, but guess what? I wasn't here when Lincoln was there, and and I think Lincoln is real debatable. If you want to ask me, you know, but. Modern presidents today, we, we, we could say, I look back, I didn't like George Bush initially. When I look back at his presidency, I think that George Bush was a good man. I ain't going to get no help now. <laughs> and, and I say that because I believe that he was a man of conviction. I'm not talking about his party. I'm talking about the terms, in terms of the type of person he was and what he is now based on what you see today. He is a far better cry than what you see out there today. I'm not trying to get into politics. Somebody say he got eight words. So what the, the word charisma, I'm going to use it as acrostic. The first word is, is that when you want people to be drawn to you, you got to show that you're concerned about people. you got to demonstrate that you have a real concern about people's lives. Somebody say amen to that. And I want you to understand, these traits are not simply inborn. They are attainable by anybody who cares about other people and want to develop them. Concern. People that are known and have the ability to show concern for people's deepest needs and their interests. It doesn't mean that people that are anointed are people that are mushy or patronizing. But when you are around them, you sense their interest and care and you leave them feeling important. Do you have people like that in your life? It's to show that they are concerned about you. Someone asked this brother by the name of Pearl uh, Mester, the greatest Washington hostess since Dolly Madison, the secret of success was getting so many rich and famous people to attend the parties. She said it was all in the greeting and the goodbyes. She claimed each guest arrived, she met them with her own personal greeting. At last you're here. That's what she said to everybody. At last you're here. At each Left, she expressed her regrets with, I'm sorry you have to leave so soon. At any gathering, you'll find two types of people, those who arrive with an attitude of here I am and those who possess the attitude of there you are. It doesn't take long to notice that people flock to the, to the people that there you are. There you are. You're concerned about me. When you show people that you're concerned about them, they become concerned about you. 
They become concerned about what you're doing, where you're going, and, and how you're doing it. But you've got to show them how much you are concerned about them. Making others feel good about themselves, then you are making them feel good about you. I'm going to say it again. Making others feel good about themselves instead of making others feel good about you. Does that make sense? Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38. Look what Jesus did. He is our example. Everywhere that he went, he showed a deep concern for people's lives. Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Give it to me in the NLT if you can. Thank you so much. How many glad they announced the Lord this morning? Oh, come on. That's just a few. How many glad? You could have been anywhere. You could have saw the bucks this morning. You could have saw anything. Are you glad you're here? Look at Jesus. I said, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. And when he saw the crowds, look what he had. He had compassion. When you get up in the morning, you go to work, do you have compassion, or are you just thinking about getting to work? Or are you thinking about just getting promoted? Or, you, or is your focus just about you? Or do you have the ability to focus and show your concern for others? When Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because what? They were confused and helpless. How many people did you see like that? If you're privileged to be in the work environment and see people while you're interacting, you see how confused they are. The Bible said they were confused, helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Why is that? It's always a great harvest, but there's always a few workers. So he says, pray to the Lord who is the, in charge of the harvest that he might send more workers into his field. Which means everybody don't have the same concern for folk like we do. Jesus went through all the cities teaching. And here's the sequence. He saw. He felt. And then he cared. Who do you see? And when do you feel? And then how do you demonstrate that you care? I ain't getting no help in here this morning. It's difficult to become motivated to help people without first seeing, feeling their needs. We have a lot of pontificating in this country. We watch something on the news, we start pontificating. Oh, that's not right. That's not right. This ain't right. And then when the, when the dust settles, you're still in the same place you started. But people that are really anointed are concerned. They wait till the dust is settled, and then they go in quietly because the anointing like salt. Don't make no noise if it, unless it's me using the salt shaker. You're going to hear it. Man, put that salt down. Give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute, man. Something about me and salt. So the first word, I got to show, somebody said I got to show concern. When I'm anointed, when the grace of God is on my life. As I said, when I came in this morning, the enemy tried to trip us up with something. I realized how the enemy operates, but I had to stop for a minute. Because, and it had to, you know, I shouldn't have had to go through it, but guess what? It was important because lives are important. And I wasn't going to let the enemy get no victory. And even though the person might not have still gotten where they wanted to be, they wasn't where they was. Why? Because the goal of the people of God is to show concern even for those that you shouldn't be concerned for. This, the spirit of recidivism, you know, when people keep doing things over and over again. Recidivism, you know. So I go to jail and they come back. And, you know, when I was praying, I was saying, this, this is an evil world we live in. Mother Verne, it's an evil world that you would look. That, I just heard that the president signed into law um, uh, um, uh, an executive order to stop these predatory uh, lenders from charging inmates and their families 10 and 15 dollars a minute for a phone call 
to somebody who is already locked up. Already in jail and you charging them. Is it this is a call from correctional facility and so and so. And the first three minutes will be 15. And what do you think the person going to say? No, they sit there and talk to me for no. They got a bill of two and three hundred dollars. How do how do you call yourself a righteous nation when you have all this kind of predatory stuff going on against the poor? Then when they get out of jail, guess what? They throw even more stuff on them. They got to pay stuff. They got to pay fees. They got to and listen. They never get free. And then here. In this state, God help us, in this state, we voted that if they got out of jail, they could get their voting rights back. I was so pleased with the state that's, that's, that's in the South that would consider that knowing that most of the people that would probably vote would vote a certain way, but they said, no, it's the right thing to do. And then what did the governor do? He wasn't having it. So where are all the people that are concerned? The Jay-Z's and all these people got, listen, it ain't nothing but money that's in some sense. They said, well, we'll give them their voting rights back, but they got to pay a fine. God knows if I had the money, I'd pay everybody's fine. Where's the concern? Where's the concern for mothers who don't know how to take care of kids and take care of a husband at the same time? Where's the concern for the young sister who's struggling to make ends meet? You ain't there no more because God done bless you. And all you got to say to her in the morning is God bless you. You look nice and everything. But where's the concern? You know, it's you do me and I do you. You do you and I do me. So there has to be. Somebody said there has to be a concern. I'm a no one has to be concerned. Number one, number two, help. Somebody say help. You gotta have the ability to reach out and help others. Anointed people, charismatic people, they're not out to profit off of others. They have gifts that God has given them through grace. And the Greek word for gift, as I said earlier, is charisma. It means the gift of grace. God has freely bestowed upon us spiritual gifts because of grace that he's extended towards us. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 6. God has given us gifts. Somebody say gifts. Gifts to be able to help people. Help folks. Not just flour. You know, I grew up in a time where if there was enough flour, my mother could send you next door and say, tell so-and-so we're low on the flour. It didn't have to be embarrassed that they would give you that flour, that sugar, whatever you need. Today ain't none of that going on. Two people, so many fo folks are ashamed of letting know people with the true fat. We're so, we're so rotten about being transparent. We always want to look a certain way in. No, we just broke and tore up as we want to be on the inside. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well, which means that I can't do everything well, and neither can you. But if we come collectively to together, we can all do our own individual thing, and as we finish, the cake would be perfect. The ability to help. And when you read this out further, since we have these gifts that differ according to the great gift to us, we have to exercise them accordingly. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 12, it says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the working of the service, for the building of the, uh, for the, building of the church. In both references, the emphasis is on the variety of gifts and their purpose in the kingdom. So it's always for other people. Listen, God ain't gift you so you can sit down on your derriere and not do nothing. Look cute. Yeah, you're cute, but that's, listen you got to do something. We need everybody in here engaged and trying to pull something. Why? This is the year of increase. God said we're going to be in our own building. How are we going to get in there? It's going to take people and take resources. And I could tell you some of the wonderful things that are going on in my life that God is saying, I'm going to get you there. If they don't catch the revelation, I'll get you there on the revelation I give you. I know, I know a few rich people. 
I know a few people that want me to be in that kind of environment. And I told God I'd do anything he want me to do to get where to get where I need to be, especially this time next year. I want to be in my own. Can I get an amen in the house? So I need help. And people have problems. Many of them believe John, uh, a guy who's in desperation, uh, my, uh, let me, my favorite cartoon character is Charlie Brown. He displayed an attitude with Mitch, which many of us can identify. He and Linus were talking about their problem. Linus said, I guess it's, it's wrong always to be worrying about tomorrow. Maybe we should think only about today. Charlie Brown replied, no, that's giving up. I'm still hoping that yesterday will get better. <laughs> and boy, crazy. <laughs> Charlie Brown said he's still hoping that yesterday would get better. What can you do to help people with their problems? First of all, you got to encourage them. Oh, I got these bills. Are they going to take my car? Say, hey, you ain't the only person who lost a car. Hey, hold up. It ain't the end of the world. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves it. Got to encourage them. Too often people are rather, they rather flee than fight. They rather forget than fight. Second, you got to encourage them to solve their own problems. What happens to people, a lot of times they have their problems, they bring them to us, they want us to solve them. Oh, come on now, you're getting quiet, you're getting quiet, you're getting quiet, you're getting quiet. Don't get quiet. You know, your kids, when they come to you with their problem, they're, what they're saying is, I made a mess, and I need you to fix it. That's what they do. They're saying, you, you the big Mexican bowl, so here's the mess I need you to fix. No, 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 no. You say, I agree you did make it a mess, but let me give you some hints and some helpful tools. You're going to solve your own problem. See, because if I keep solving your problem, you keep looking at me like I'm God, and I'm not God. I can help you, but I can't help you like God can. Sometimes you got to use the, 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 the following things to teach, your, teach others and teach your children. You got to help others through difficulty. You got to tell them that it takes time to get out of the mess they've been in. My credit's bad. Yeah, girl, you've been using, you know, you've been, you've been, you've been living here and not paying your rent and, you got kicked out there? Come on, you can't. I see you see the house of your dreams, but your credit is bad. It's going to take you a few years, so you tell, you tell them it's going to take some time. They're coming out of a bad relationship, and they see, uh oh, I've, uh, and it was, it was a traumatic relationship, one that traumatized them and you, and now they see Mr. Goodbar. And they're infatuated with him. And you got to tell them, girl, look here, stop, stop right here. It takes time. First, it takes time to heal. Second, it takes time to figure out whether or not you are prepared to move on. Number two, you have, you have to expose, watch this, when you're helping people, you have to expose yourself to their problems. Come over here, come here, come here. See, this is where we, Marty, this is where we try to stop it. We, we, we want to help people, but, but once they start telling us what they're really in, they start unwinding the package, it's starting becoming too messy, and we say, okay, listen, I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I, my, somebody's buzzing at the door. Let me get back to you. I promise. I'll, babe, I'm praying for you. I'm pr I promise. Ooh, child, I had to get off the phone with her. Ooh, I saw her pulling me in there. I saw myself almost all the way in there, child. Ooh. Thank, get off the phone. Thank. Hey, shot, ba 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 But real anointed people expose themselves not just to the problem, but they do it in order to relate to the person going through the problem. They assure them of the confidence they got in them. And they, they give them strategies, call it, you know, strategies, you know, creative strategies that they haven't yet pulled on yet. And show them how to better deal with their problem. And then watch this. They offer them hope through the process. Somebody say hope. Number three. I'm on number three now. Somebody say action. I want to be a person of influence. I got it. Somebody say I got it. I got to be a person of action. Somebody say action. 
something exciting always seems to be happening around a person who's anointed. The anointed person has an aversion to, not to be boring. He or she may be controversial, unusual, entertaining, but they are never boring. Ain't nobody going to say I'm boring. They'll say this, they'll say that, but they won't say I'm boring. Amen. What will they say about you? Be honest with yourself. Evaluate how you come across to others. A young fellow at a dry church turned to his mother and said, pay the man and let's get out of here. The preacher obviously lacked charisma. When the evangelist John Wesley was asked why people seemed to be drawn to him, he answered, he said, well, you see, when you set yourself on fire, nobody caught that. The, the young boy was at a church, and the, and the preacher's message was dry. It had no life in it. It had no enthusiasm in it. It had no anointing on it. And he told his mother, let's get out of here. The great notice uh, teacher, theologian, John Wesley, they asked him, why are people drawn to you, Mr. Wesley? He said, I always put myself on fire before I get here. Makes a difference. Jeremiah said it was like fire shut up in my bones. Somebody said, I got fire in me. Oh, come on and say, I got fire. If you want to create, if you want to increase your interest in other people, you have to develop creativity in your confidence. I'm going to say it again. If you want to increase your interest in other people, you have to develop your creativity and your confidence. I can do this. I'm going to get a church. I was, with some, I was hanging around with some millionaires the last couple of days. And the man said to me, you said, you know what? Man, I like when you're around us. He said, whenever you're around, man, we get the peace come over us. He said, he said, he said nobody else makes me feel he said, when I saw your message, it just did something for me. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. I, I, I see, when you ask God for something, you better be conscious that God can bring it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. He, listen, you can't tell God where he's going to bring it from. Now, the clear blue sky, somebody called me and said, hey, we got an offer for you. We want you to be here with us because you got something that nobody else got. You got it. I ain't getting no help in here. Tell Sean, come on, I'm going to get out of here, man. Somebody say, I got it. Somebody say, I got it. Remember when I started with them, it was just three or four people in that company, mother. I was running all over the place. I was scared, intimidated because I love a black boy, but I had not been in the deep south like this, knocking on doors, talking to all kinds of people. But what I failed to realize, Carla, that in spite of the color, in spite of the cultural difference, I had it and it didn't know it. Did. Oh, God, I wish I had a witness there. Even though I, did, I wasn't an expert on the product yet, I was an expert on people's hearts. And I was able, good God Almighty, to go out there when they laughed at me. They said, listen, they said, in, if, 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 you, if you can do 10 sales in a month, we would give you XXX. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I said, I'm going to do it. Before is Marcus here? Before I realized I'm gonna do it. I said I, I said I'm gonna do it before I, I I knew anything about the product. I said, do I have a witness in here? Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor. Say, oh neighbor, I got it. I got it. Lord have mercy. I got it. It's all over me. I could feel it in my hands can I get a witness give your neighbor a high five and say neighbor oh neighbor when Moses when Moses was given the assignment to go and set the Israelis free he told God who am I that Pharaoh should listen to me and God told him 
I am with you. And when God is with you, it means you got it. Give your neighbor a high five. Give your neighbor a high five. And say neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I didn't realize that I had it. My first wife treated me like a dog. I felt depressed. Had to see a counselor. I worked on a dead-end job. But one Friday, I got saved and got anointed and appointed with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I began to see myself better than I saw myself before. And the Bible records that Moses had a problem whether he could pull it off. And God told him, you got it. He said, what do I have? And God said, you've been carrying around that stick. And you think it's just a stick. He said, throw it down. Throw it down, Moses. Throw it down. I'm going to show you something that you never thought you had when he threw the stick down the stick turned into snakes all these years I've been walking with this stick as a support mechanism I didn't know that any moment notice it can turn into a devouring I wish I had some help in it the Bible and the Bible says that Moses was shocked because the stick that he had turned into another form and God said don't be shocked go and grab that stick somebody said grab it somebody said grab that money grab that promotion grab that husband grab that wife it's yours open up your mouth and say it's mine watch it he grabbed the stick and it turned back into a stick then God said you got something else stick your hand inside your breast when he stuck his hand in his breast and pulled it out it became a leopard and Moses about lost his mind and God had to stabilize him he said boy I'm trying to show you you got something in you that the devil don't know can I get a witness in here there's some stuff in you that it took pressure it took trials it took tribulation in order for what was in you to rise Sarah Moses knew that if he stayed a leopard his assignment was finished but God told him stick your hand back in your vest and when he stuck his hand back inside it came out like it was new he had authority and he had healing tell your neighbor I got it what do you mean you got it I'm a winner give somebody high five Shake your neighbor, rock them from side to side, rock them and reel them, reel them and rock them and say, I got it, I got it, I got it. Come on, let the devil know you got it. Weeping may endure for night. When I wake up in the morning, joy, joy, cause I got it. You might have with me last night, but tomorrow's coming. And tomorrow, things will be better, cause I got it. I might have failed it.
today, but tomorrow's coming. Somebody say, I got it. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Say, I got it. You can walk away and I still got it. You ain't got to hang with me. Your being here don't validate me, God. I got it. Whether you hear or not, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. And when you got it, it produces. I said it produces. It will heal the brokenhearted. It will give sight to the blind. It will save the sinner and take you from grace to grace and glory to glory. Somebody say, I got it. I'm here because somebody had it. And when they laid hands on me, it broke the foul spirits of my life. And now, and now, say yeah, say yeah. I got influence, I got sensitivity, I got motivation, and I got affirmation. I don't need nobody to motivate me. I'm motivated all by myself. Like the psalmist said, every now and again, you got to encourage yourself. I ain't got no help today. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Every now and again, you gotta be able to encourage yourself. I look good. I'm a star. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. Though he slay me, yet will I Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for the Lord is with me, his rod and staff, they comfort me. He sets the table before my enemies, and with this cup, my head, he anoints at my cup, it runneth over, surely, 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 say yeah, say yeah, yeah. say yeah. It had your name on it. It couldn't kill you, but you had it. Do I have anybody in here? You have escaped death, death angels, because you got it. Now open up your mouth and give God a praise. The devil know you got it, and the devil know you got it. Open up your mouth. Concerned, I'm concerned. I help. I go into action. I produce results. I'm an influencer. I'm sensitive, I'm motivated, and I affirm because I got it. And you can't take it from me. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Today, 
That's all right. Somebody's going to come and give me some help. Somebody sees what you're doing to me. And God will send them at the right moment to lift up my spirit. Say, yeah. say. Brother, first time I laid eyes on you. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that you got it. And whoever's been telling you, you ain't got it. They're lying because they have not seen the glory that God has put on the inside of you. You're not confused. You're in a place right now where God's about to flip the script. And when he does, I wish I had a witness in here. All hell gonna break loose because what you told them before is going to come to pass. Say yeah! Say yeah! Every now and again, you need to stop into a strange place with strange people, but have the right spirit and let them confirm what you've been wrestling about. And then you say, Lord, thank you. Do I have a Lord thank you in the building? Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on and say thank you. Give him praise. Say thank you. You're here for the first time. New Year, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. We won't make a moment for you to get saved. You're in this building. You're watching my Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Hit in the comment section, Bishop Register, I want to be saved today. What must I do to be saved? You must confess with your mouth to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart and you shall be saved. So we give deference right now for those that are looking for the master. Pray for salvation for all those in need right now. They're coming to the altar. We lift them up before you in the name of Jesus. And we plead the blood over your relationship, over your purpose, over this moment that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We release the spirit of increase upon this body and upon all those that are watching. We thank you for this is our hour and this is our moment and we give you praise in the glorious name of Jesus to Christ. Somebody shout amen. Come, come to Jesus. God, you have time. Come, come to Jesus.
the plea has went out for those of you who are not saved to come, whether you're here or whether you're on Facebook Live. But we also extend the invitation for those of you to come who would like to be a part of this particular church. You want to say, I want my name on the road at this church. In the event you laid up in the hospital, that you have a pastor, you have some men, you have some women that will come and see about you. You know, it's not haphazard that we have this church that stand here and that's been standing here since 2013 right here at this place, 1321 Providence Road. And it's important to have a church that you can call your church. It's important to have a pastor that you can call your pastor. A first lady that you can say, this is my first lady. This is my sisters and brothers in the body of Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 You know, some people come and they come and we just accept you and we love you, but... It's also good to say, this is my church. Amen. This is my people. Say it, y'all. Amen. This is my church. This is my church. Amen. 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 Sister Gigi said, this is my church. And I've been coming for a long time. But this year, I'm going to serve in the house of the Lord. Amen. This is my church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. And it's okay if you haven't stood up audibly and said that at this time, at this particular time. We still love you, Cherie. Amen. Did I say it right, Siri? Cherie? Did I say no, your no, name? No, no, no. Let, 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 leave it to go. Let it go. We still love let each and go. every one of you. Amen. Let that go. And we thank and praise God for all of you who have come here and now this time we will come to give our offering unto the Lord amen amen to give and plant seed here in this church in this body of Christ amen hallelujah we bless you and we praise you if you need an offering envelope you can hold your hand up amen and our ushers will be happy to give you one if you're giving by electronic device, amen, or if you've already given or already mailed it in, we thank and praise God, each of you, for that which you have given and sown into this house. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God for you. Ushers, you may serve the people.
Let us stretch our hands towards the offering basket. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory for that which you have been so gracious and blessed us with, oh God. We thank you for your provisions in our lives. We thank you that we can receive seed from these, your people, oh God, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. May we take it and use it, Father God, to continue to build your kingdom. May you bless and touch these, your people, on today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning, I believe, amen? Would you like to stand, sir? And amen. Come on, New Life, amen. We welcome you. Amen. On behalf welcome, of... Welcome, man. On behalf of our church, amen, New Life Christian Fellowship, we know you could have probably looked up on online and went anywhere in the Tampa Bay area, but God sent you here today to celebrate and to be a part of our service. And we hope that there was something said, done, or shared that inspired you and that encouraged you and that'll make you want to come back and return. Amen. God bless you. Amen. What, what brought you out? What brought you out? How'd you find out about us? Come on, come on back in here. She looking, she's straight for the usher and she brought a guest. Amen. Tell her to come in here. She was here. She's not there. Did, did you have a good time today? You glad you came? Yes. Already, Amen. Amen. So we thank God you came out. Amen. Bless you. Amen, amen. We want to encourage you all, those of you who have happy birthdays for the month and celebrating for the month of January. Happy birthday to you. I think, Shantana, you got a birthday next week. Amen. Amen. And Tamika and anyone else, Deacon Rogers got one later on, I think, this month. Amen. We thank and praise God for you. We want to remind those of you who have not gotten on the calendar to be a part of any of our observances or special features or programs for the year, please see me so that we can continue to um, take the time to serve in the Lord by education and awareness and by having our special features for uh, this particular year. Amen. We thank and praise God. At this time, this concludes the announcements. Bishop. I had a little cold. She, I talked to her today. You coming all right? Y'all know she'd be working real hard. And sometimes her folk that work like that, they still come out not feeling well. We thank God for her and others that do the same, come out not feeling well. Let's stand for the benediction. Cynthia's here. She ain't been feeling well for a long That's time. That's right. Cynthia! Amen. I told her she looked like a young lady over there. I mean, really young. I have to come eat some of the food you were cooking or something. She looks so good. So good to see you. Somebody say, I got it. Come on, Deborah, say it. They, they say, say, I got it. Give Shantana a high five and, and throw your hair. Throw your hair like that. Say, I got There you go. There you go. I ain't mad at you. Amen. Father, we thank you today for your blessings upon our lives, the blessings of the Lord that make us rich and add no sorrow. We thank you for this congregation of righteous people that you made right by your sacrifice on that cross. We take nothing for granted. We take not this moment for granted. We give you the absolute praise and adulation you deserve of. Now, when we leave this place with not your presence, watch over us. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you, you got it. Don't ever act like you don't have it because you got it. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. We love you, God bless you. Hit like and share. Hope to see you on Wednesday.